Hey everyone, and welcome to today's deep dive. We're going to be talking about uh, universal basic income. That's right, universal basic income, UBI. A big one. A big one, and you know we've got some interesting sources here to kind of dig into. Absolutely. Different people's thoughts and ideas about this. So yeah. for anyone who's maybe, you know, just tuning in for the first time and not familiar with the idea of UBI, it's essentially. Giving everyone a set amount of money. Giving everyone a set amount of money every month or however often they decide to give it. Just enough to live. Like a base. Like a base level of income. Mm. And the idea is that, you know, regardless of whether you're working or not, yeah. you have enough to at least, you know, survive. Basic needs. Basic needs. Yeah. Now, the sources we've got here today paint a really interesting picture of like I said, the potential benefits and challenges of UBI. Mm. We've got some videos from Cold Fusion Abundantia and even a thought-provoking article from Forbes. Lots of different... Lots of different angles. Yeah, and, and they range from, like, pretty utopian visions of a world without poverty yeah. to some pretty dark concerns about government control. Oh, yeah. It gets it gets a little scary, actually, in some yeah. of these. Yeah. But uh, but before we dive into all of that, like the, the real meat of this, yeah. I think we need to kind of ground ourselves in the why. Mm. Like, why is everyone even talking about UBI in the first place? Well, one of the big things that's driving this conversation is automation. Mm. And AI cold fusion in particular does a really good job of showing just how fast technology is changing the job market. Yeah. You know, think about it. Self checkout kiosks. Oh yeah. At the supermarket. I use those all the time. Yeah. Driverless trucks. Oh yeah. Making deliveries, AI systems that can help lawyers with legal research. It's wild. Yeah, like it's already happening. It's crazy to think about. And I and I saw in one of the sources, I think it was Cold Fusion, yeah. that mentioned that something like twenty to thirty percent of jobs yeah. could be gone. Could be displaced. By twenty thirty. By twenty thirty. Right. Which is right around the corner. Yeah. So that's that's kind of scary to think about. Yeah, and it makes you think, OK, well, what are those people going to do? Right. How are they going to survive? And I guess that's where this idea of UBI kind of comes in. Yeah, it's almost like a safety net. Like a safety net. For this future where we might not have as many jobs. Exactly. So with that in mind, let's let's look at some of the arguments in favor of UBI. What do people think are the good things? Professor Date Explains had one that seems pretty obvious. Poverty reduction. Poverty reduction. If everyone's getting money every month, at least enough to survive, then nobody's going to be... Below the poverty line. Below the poverty line. Theoretically. In theory. Um, what about... I know we talked about Finland before the show. Oh, yeah. They actually did like a pilot program. What what happened with that? So Cold Fusion talks about that. They didn't actually see a big increase in employment. Oh, really? But the interesting thing was that people reported feeling... Being happier. Healthier, happier, their well-being right. went up yeah. significantly. Just from having that little bit of extra money. It seems like it, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then there's that whole idea of, like, em empowerment and freedom, right? Like, yeah. I remember AI Uncovered talking about that. If you've got that that base level of income, then you can take risks. You can pursue education. Edu yeah. You can start a business. Take care of family. Yeah, take care of loved ones. Without constantly worrying about, like, am yeah. I going to be able to pay rent next month? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, basic survival. Yeah. It takes the pressure off a little bit. It does. And it, it kind of lets people pursue things that they maybe wouldn't have been able to before. That's really interesting. And what about the welfare system itself? Oh, yeah. Would UBI change that at all? So both Cold Fusion and Ecom Plus Dell talk about this idea mm -hmm. that UBI could replace all these different programs, programs, all mm -hmm. the different kind of means tested things that we have. It's like a patchwork. It's super complicated. So it could streamline things, make yeah. it more efficient. OK, so that's that's definitely a point in favor of UBI. But let's be real here. There's got to be some downsides, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There are some big concerns. And the cost is a huge one. Yeah. How do we even pay for this thing? Econ Plus Doll actually called it massively expensive. Massively expensive. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Dave Explains tried to do some math. Oh, yeah. And he was saying that if you gave every adult in the U.S. just $1,000 a month. A month. It would cost trillions of dollars every year. Trillions. And that's just $1,000. That's crazy. So where's that money going to come from? Right. So the sources mentioned a few possibilities. We could raise taxes. Oh. We could reallocate money from existing budgets. Or maybe even tap into things like sovereign wealth funds. That sounds pretty complicated. It is. And each option has its own problems, you know, yeah. economic and political. For sure. And then there's this whole issue of inflation, right? Oh, yeah. 
That's a big one. Like if you suddenly give everyone all this extra money, will prices just go up? That's what a lot of people are worried about. Cold Fusion and Professor Dave Explains both talked about how pumping all this money into the economy could lead to inflation. And then wouldn't that just make the whole thing pointless? Yeah, you know, would it really lift people out of poverty or would the poverty line just move up? It's like a moving target. Right. That's a tough one. And what about people just not wanting to work anymore? Oh, yeah. That's another big concern. Cold Fusion mentioned that. <laughs> Some people are worried that if you just give everyone money, they'll lose their motivation to work. Yeah. That's interesting. It really yeah. makes you think about, like, what motivates people. Human nature. Human nature. Mm. Do we just want to sit around and do nothing? Or do we need that sense of purpose that comes from work? The good question. Yeah. Speaking of purpose and maybe even like, you know, alternative income streams. Okay. I came across something recently that I thought was pretty cool. Have you heard of this website, BrianGarvin.com? BrianGarvin.com. Yeah, I think so. It's Brian with an I. Okay. And he's got this free guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. What's that all about? It's all about affiliate marketing, like building a business online. And get this, the guide is over 12,300 words long. That's a lot of information. It's packed with good stuff. Yeah. And it's completely free. You just go to his website, enter your name and email, and then you click a verification link in your email. And where do you find that link? It's in his YouTube bio. Oh, cool. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, back to UBI. We were talking about work motivation. What other concerns are there? Well, AI Uncovered brought up something I hadn't really thought about. The potential for exploitation. Like exploitation. Yeah. Like, what if businesses see UBI as an excuse to pay people less? Because they know their employees are getting that extra money. Exactly. Or landlords could raise rents. Because they know people can afford it. It's a scary thought. Yeah. You know? Could UBI actually make inequality worse? That's definitely something to think about. Yeah. So we've got these two sides to UBI, right? Yeah. On the one hand, it could eliminate poverty, give people more freedom, and simplify the welfare system. Yeah. But on the other hand, there are these concerns about cost inflation. Work disincentives. Exploitation. It's complicated. It's really complicated. So where do we go from here? Well, that's where things get even more interesting. We need to move beyond just the economics of it and start thinking about the bigger picture. Okay. Like, what kind of society do we want to create? What are our values? Those are big questions. They are. But they're the questions we need to be asking if we're going to figure out if UBI is the right path forward. That's a great point. And that's exactly what we're going to be diving into in part two of this deep dive. So stick around. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to our deep dive into universal basic income. Before the break, we were just starting to touch on some of the bigger questions surrounding UBI, going beyond the economic stuff. Yeah, the philosophical implications are huge. Like, could giving everyone free money actually change how we view work, purpose, even happiness. Exactly. And Cold Fusion actually brought up a fascinating point from Jordan Peterson, the clinical psychologist. Oh, yeah. I know Jordan Peterson. He's big on personal responsibility, finding meaning in life, that sort of thing. Right. And in the context of UBI, he argues that just having money doesn't automatically make for a fulfilling life. He believes people need purpose, something to drive them, something UBI might not inherently offer. Hmm. That's interesting. So could UBI create a kind of purpose crisis. Yeah. Everyone's basic needs are met, but there's no real drive to contribute. It's a real possibility. Makes you wonder, is work tied to our sense of purpose or could we find it elsewhere, like in volunteering or creative pursuits? Could those become central to our lives? It's a good question. And it makes me think of the Alaska Permanent Fund, that real world program Cold Fusion mentioned been running for decades, paying all Alaskans annually from oil revenues. Almost like a mini UBI experiment. Exactly. And Alaska hasn't become some lazy, purposeless society. People still work, contribute, find meaning, even with that financial cushion. It suggests that UBI doesn't automatically equal societal collapse or mass apathy. Maybe it would free people to explore new things, start businesses, be creative, or just be more involved in their communities. I like that. It's not about work or UBI, but how UBI might change our relationship with work. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would allow people to find truly fulfilling work, not just jobs they hate to survive. Now you're getting it. Imagine a world where people can pursue work aligned with their passions, not just chasing paychecks. 
could unleash so much innovation, creativity, social good. Okay, so we're getting a bit optimistic here, right. but we got to be realistic too. The future of work is super complex and UBI isn't a cure-all. For sure. There are so many questions, potential problems, runaway inflation, labor shortages, government overreach, exploitation. We need to be mindful of those. Absolutely. We need to be careful, think things through, learn from those UBI trials happening. It's a conversation for everyone, economists, policymakers, everyday people. We all need to weigh the pros and cons, find solutions for a more equitable and sustainable future. That's what this deep dive is all about. Sparking curiosity, critical thinking, empowering you, the listener, to participate in these vital conversations. And this whole idea of a more equitable future, creating opportunities, makes me think of BrianGarvin.com again. Oh, right. The affiliate marketing guy. What was that about again? So for anyone interested in exploring other ways to earn income, taking charge of their finances, BrianGarvin.com, Brian with an I, offers a free guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of advice on building an online business. That could be helpful for navigating the changing work landscape. Definitely. Wow. Just go to his site, put in your name and email, and the guide's yours. Verification links in his YouTube bio. I might have to check that out. <laughs> but for now, back to UBI. We've covered potential benefits. Less poverty, more individual power, maybe even more creativity, a whole new outlook on work. But the future of work is uncertain, and UBI isn't a one-size-fits-all answer. Absolutely. This conversation needs everyone. It's not just about economists and politicians. It's about us all thinking critically about UBI's possibilities and drawbacks, working together towards a more just and sustainable world. That's the beauty of a deep dive like this. Not about giving you all the answers, but sparking curiosity, making you think, empowering you to engage with these big questions. Exactly. So as you go about your day, consider this. If UBI were real, how would it change your life? What choices would you make? What opportunities would you seize? What would you do with that freedom and security? It's time to flip the script and put you in the driver's seat. We're going to explore those what ifs. Imagine what a future with guaranteed income could mean for you and everyone around you. Welcome back to the final part of our deep dive into universal basic income. We've covered a lot of ground. We have the economic arguments, the societal impacts, even the philosophical side of things. But now it's time to get personal. Imagine UBI is real. You wake up one morning and there it is. A regular payment from the government, enough to cover your needs no matter what. How would that feel? Take a minute, really think about that. How would that change your life? Would you work less? Maybe switch to part time. More time for family, hobbies, those projects you've always wanted to do. Or maybe you'd still work but you'd be able to make different choices. Ask for that raise. Try a less stressful career. Even start your own business without worrying about going broke if it doesn't work out. Possibilities are kind of exciting, right? Think about the risks you might take, the dreams you could chase. And it's not just you. What about your community? Basic needs met? Maybe people would volunteer more? Support local businesses. Yeah. Share their talents in ways they couldn't before. Like a ripple effect of positive change just from guaranteeing everyone a basic income. Now, we know UBI isn't perfect. Mm. We talked about the challenges, being careful with implementation, constantly reevaluating things. For sure. But it's still a powerful concept, isn't it? It is. A future where everyone has a chance to live with dignity and purpose no matter what. And if you're thinking about taking control of your finances, exploring different options. I'm reminded of that resource we mentioned. BrianGarvin.com, right? Brian with an I. Yeah. He's got that free guide on affiliate marketing. <laughs> 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of advice on starting an online business. Just go to the website, put in your name and email, and it's yours. Verification links in his YouTube bio. A great example of how people can use technology and creativity to create their own opportunities in this crazy world. So as we wrap up, here's our final thought for you. If UBI became real, how would you use that freedom to create a better life for yourself in your community? Keep exploring this topic, keep the conversation going, and keep imagining the possibilities. The future is what we make it. And who knows, maybe UBI, even with all its challenges, could be a part of that future. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope it's made you think differently about the world around you. See you next time.